Hang on, I've just finished stirring my coffee. No, 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 no. Come here. We're having chia, Pedro. There you go. You love your chia. I'll just move my coffee away. No, no, no. Yeah. There you go. Hey, baby, baby. Chia. Woo, 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 woo. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. Chia, mommy. That's Pedro's breakfast. Now you won't get bitten by mosquito, Pedro. I don't know if you could hear the TV in the background because hubby's got the thing blaring. Uh, the TV, oh, the thing. I just call it the thing. It's like, can you turn the thing down? Every day, this is the thing. <laughs> I got the TV blaring in my ear, sending me mad, but anyway. He has his headset, but then that doesn't last very long. So anyway, I'm just going to show you this little contraption I've got now. So I've got a few of this in my workshop or my gemstone workshop. It's meant or I intended to use this for putting different gemstones in because they're just sort of small. And oh, hello, baby P. You want to say hello? OK, mommy's just going to put her forceps down because mommy's about to go outside. Come here. Come, come. Come, baby P. Hello. Say hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hey, how's your day been? Come on, talk to them. Hello, how's your day been? Are you having a good day? We're having a bad day here. Yeah, it's really windy outside, but mommy's still going outside. But Pedro can't come because Pedro's going to get blown away. Okay, I'm going to turn this around now, baby P. Okay, come, come. So this is the drill. I got the TV in the background blaring, and I got Pedro, who would not leave me alone, Anything I touch, everywhere I go, he comes and wants to get involved. Anyway, so this is my little contraption that I'm setting up right now. This is going to be my growing area for leaf propagation. So any leaves of my succulents that I get from outside or inside, doesn't matter where I get the leaves from, I throw them all in here. So I started on the 5th of the 3rd and the 8th of the 3rd, which is today, 2022. And so I'm going to fill this up. That way, all my leaf propagation are intact in one uh, contained area like this one. Instead of having it all everywhere like this. Those are less leaves propagations everywhere. See, look at that. So it's just a big mess and I don't like it. I don't like messy things, see? But anyway, let's go outside. Baby P, you have to stay here. Stay here. Hey, stay here. Mommy's gonna go outside. You're gonna get blown away. I'm gonna lose you, baby P. Okay. <laughs> Very noisy outside. The wind, the wind is really strong and it's been raining for a few days. So garden is a no-go zone for me, but it sort of just stopped a little bit today. There's a slight drizzle. So I decided to come here and show you my mess. I still haven't done anything, but on my way to the bin, I forgot. Oh my God, see this one, look. I dropped this, uh, this is my Frank Raynelt that I dropped a few days ago, broken the pot. And then now I'm decided I'm going to take this pot, bring it inside my workshop and grind it off. This will make a beautiful wind chime. Okay, just came here to take out my recycling bin and I got carried away and I started cleaning my Studebaker. Uh, what else did I clean? <laughs> reorganize things and I still got a few to do my colorata is not looking very colorful and this uh, these are all leaf grown from my graptopetalum ellen so I just put that there because it's growing in my 50 zone so right now we've got overcast days and rainy days and no sunshine and uh, so I decided to put it there and then this one I just got distracted by this clavatum look how beautiful and big you are and I just sniffed it a while ago and it's got nice scent 
This is clavatum as well. Just surveying, inspecting what's the damage in my succulents that needs to be attended. And that one, I actually soaked that a few days ago. That needed some soaking, so I soaked it. It was really, really dry. And I soaked it. After soaking it, look, I've got green moss. I never had green moss on my pots before. And someone just asked a question about what to do with green moss and I said, well, I never seem to get them and then now I do. This is my red tip. See the devil's listening. Oh, by the way, yes, this one. Grapto Pitalum Ellen. Hello, hello, beautiful, gorgeous. Okay, I just want to compare this with the uh, Marine. Okay, so Ellen, I call this the big one, the big four. <laughs> Oh, so a small form. So the small form looks like little bubble gum. Hang on. Let's go somewhere here. Compare. Compare. Another. This is Mendoza Marine. This is Mendoza. I think Ellen. There you go. That's the difference. So cute. I think I like this one. It looks like a lavender pebbles, but it's not. And I've been cruising online. Hang on. Where did you come from? I forgot now. I've been cruising online. On Facebook and a lot of people are posting photos of what is the difference of uh, pebbles grab uh, lavender pebbles and Ellen okay they do look very similar so the thumb so the thumb size this is quite a compact form of the large variety of Mendoza and that's sort of grown dry or it's been stressed basically so it's nice and round one that's not stressed in a big pot, a lot of soil. Look, see the difference? Not as pretty. Hang on, I'll take it out. See that my forceps would be. <laughs> so, look at the difference. So this is actually bigger. So there, there you go. So the the bottom. Oh my God, I got spiked with my booby cactus. So the bottom is. Look, see the difference? I think the one that stress is much much fatter and rounder. Of course, you have to have. I think. The right soil mix for this but this soil mix here is quite dry so although we're getting a lot of rain this is in my show you tropical soil mix look at all the cocoa peat in there so that's my tropical soil mix that i planted that in there and look how beautiful that is with the rain and everything you really need to water it every day a lot of people get scared with my tropical soil mix because they see the coconut coir. The coconut coir, what it does is keep the moisture inside, but outside the coconut coir, every little bit of structure, is all dry. I've shown this in one of my videos where in I have a dry looking coconut coir and I squeeze it and there's lots of water in it, but outside it looks dry. So anyway, let's go. Oh. My, my poor plants, they really, I can't work in the garden because of my situation, you know how it is. We got appointments here and there and whatever, <laughs> I'm just lining up all these videos that I'm supposed to, well, I want to do and show you, but I just can't find the time. And this, what are you, lovely rose, I need to chop, chop, chop them because a lot of them are getting really leggy, so it's got a lot to do now, I find, with the soil mix. If they don't like the soil mix, they're gonna grow leggy. And this one even here, in this pot here, if I want it to grow compact, see, when you get aerial roots like that, that means the plant is saying, I don't like where I'm in, could you please change my soil mix? Autumn here in Australia, and this one has been hibernating uh, after winter because it got damaged. This is my Echeveria Suyun. And it got damaged by the frost from last year. And it just recovered. And so I put it in here and it's starting to color up. But it's not really coloring up that much because we have been having a lot of rain. The sun doesn't shine. And you are gorgeous, that black thing. I just see blacks on my screen. That's uh, Romeo Rubin. And also another Amestro here that's grow. I just done an Amestro video, I think a couple of days ago, with my exposed Amestro over here. Now this one, I overlooked this one. It's just hiding in the corner, but it's in the 50% UV area. Even with the 50% UV zone area, it's still sort of pale compared to my other one, which is sort of hidden. See, it's still so beautiful. Anyway.
update on my sunset peony. So I bought this peony about a month ago now. Uh, and it's growing really well, but it just contracted some fungus or powdery mildew, I think, because we had so much rain and all I could see is the sea mungus fertilizer in there. So go in there. You're supposed to go inside. So there's one, two, I can see. But anyway, there's new growth. There's lots of healthy new growth, but the old leaves started having fungus or powdery mildew. So I can't really identify between these moldy things. But what I've done is spray it. It was worse before. So you can see those new ones there again forming. So I just keep spraying. I sprayed it twice now with my metho solution. And it seems to be handling it. So I need to probably get some fungicide somewhere. Well, I did buy some fungicide yesterday and I'm going to use it. But... I just got it yesterday. I still have to read the instructions first. But all of my, or my gilo with bumps seems to be recovering. And the new growth doesn't have any bumps. But the rest of my gang here, the mocha variegated is still in need. Oh, no. Oh, yesterday it was soft, but now it's hardened a little bit. So after watering them, they need time to adjust. So that's why you can't expect it. Unless I soak it, then they will not harden up. They still go soft. And I just can't believe that. Oh, just so beautiful, that uh, West Rainbow. All oh, leaf props. But I can see some dry leaves, which we need to attend to. And this one now, I need to open that up. So maybe cut that off and then hopefully grow some more. I'm going to do a video of how I'm going to separate this now. But anyway, just an update on my babies here. It's more of an update really, isn't it? Because I can't do anything. I want to do a specific video, but oh my goodness, Hoshikagi. Well, specific videos I can't do because it's just raining. I can't work in the garden. Plus my time, I have to squeeze in. I only have uh, taking the trash out time. <laughs> And so I squeeze in and I just can't help myself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to compare this. Okay. A Hoshikagi is a Lawi hybrid. Now I'm going to compare this with another Lawi hybrid, which is a Monroe. Now, where are you? I've got no space to see that Monroe there. Oh, my goodness. That's so beautiful. Let's go find a spot without me dropping the pot. Let's find a spot without dropping the pot that even rhymes. Now, Okay, Hoshikagi on the right, Monroe on the left. Now, which one? Although the pot of Monroe is much prettier, bigger, Hoshikagi will still smaller. These two have been grown from a leaf, both of them. And they look very, very, very similar, aren't they? Except the Hoshikagi, you see it's really, it's, it's much, much redder in the center or pinkier. Most of my plants thrive on neglect and I don't pamper them. I can't pamper them. I haven't got time. So this is another Hoshikagi, but it is just so beautiful. So after growing thousands of succulents, I'm not saying thousands as it's like one, two, three, four, five. I'm talking about variety. Well, genus, species and variety. I've got thousands. I don't even want to count because my echeveria alone, I've got almost 500 different echeverias that are alive. I'm counting the live ones that I kept alive and the dead ones I don't count. Now, oh, come to carousel, what's going on? So, anyway, I love Hoshikagi. Hoshikagi and Monroe. Hang on, take that off. There's more dry leaves there. There you go. I got three at once hang on where's my oh i lost my bin okay i found it so anyway this one kanya i'm just showing you your <laughs> krasula what are you forgot now oh my god i know the name of this one but ah oh, there you go Munglo. Munglo. <laughs> variegated it's growing it's growing and everything else is growing uh this one kanya gave this to me as well my light and lovely it looks very similar to Pachytoides, Pachyveria or Graptu, never mind Pachytoides anyway, which is this one here. So that's a Pachytoides. So I wonder if it's the same plant 
with different names. I don't know. And also, someone requested an update on my Karma Lola. Check out my Karma Lola. It's still the same size. It's still probably grown about a couple of millimeters and another one new leaf. See, but it's still alive, hasn't killed it. Also, update on my bluebird variegated. My bluebird variegated got attacked by fungus gnats and it was in a very pretty pot and I took it out and planted it here. And now this, okay, don't touch it, there you go. Can you see the new growth? There's a couple of pimples showing there. And finally, hello beautiful. Lena, look at your cubic frost variegated. It is so gorgeous. Hello, gorgeous. Now, I'm not even going to touch her. But I did. I took off one, two, three horrible leaves in the bottom. And hopefully they will grow. There's another one I want to take off. There you go. And hope that will grow. But my Tinkerbell, can you believe the Tinkerbell? If you are following my videos, my vlogs especially, I've shown this, uh, I don't know, a few days ago, because, yeah, I think a couple of weeks ago I shown this one, wherein I removed a lot of the leaves in the bottom, and the leaves that I removed, look at them, they're all growing, they're all Tinkerbells, little Tinkerbell, 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 oh my goodness. My goodness, so many tinkerbells and weeds. Now weeds, that's why you need a forcep, or I need a forcep when I walk around here. So everything is growing and happy despite the rain, except this one, the Chantilly rainbow, is just now coming out. It's just from the shock of being uh, tortured, actually, from being grown inside, outside, and then inside and outside again. Fungus gnats, whatever, spider mites. And now, it's going good, but I am not touching this pot here. I am leaving it. Let it be, let it be. Oh, look, my purple gem. I think that's also a purple gem there. And then that's uh, a baby from this mummy here. The mummy's gone green. My bluebird, which was showing signs of variegation before, grown from a leaf, that's the mother leaf there at the back, now has popped out two heads. I just killed the mosquito. I'm wearing black and everything. Oh my God, see? Just this the black thing there, that's a mosquito. There's encephalitis or something like that that's going on right now that if you get bitten by mosquito, that's it. You're going to get water in your brain. And... I am paranoid, that's why I'm eating my chia. Anyway, this is now my sedum clavatum variegated. And from one plant, thank you again, Lena Lee. From one plant, look at that. Look how many heads it's got right now. So it's just coming out. During summer, they are dormant. That's why you keep pampering them and pampering them during summer or when the weather is hot or the temperature is high, they're going to die on you. So if you just leave them alone, all your sedums, leave them alone to uh, sleep it off. They need to sleep as well so they can uh, generate their energy for their growing season. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end it with going inside and taking my bin with me. And also, I'm going to show you this beautiful... Okay, this is my oldest, well, the baby of my oldest sedum clavatum and it's going green and well as well in here because it's not getting enough enough sun we need sun but this one here haha <laughs> look at this gorgeous thing here isn't that delicious oh my goodness despite the not having the right condition or growing condition at the moment hang on i'll smell it oh yummy <laughs> It's so yummy. Anyway, guys, my camera lens is getting, my screen is getting wet. So I better go inside in that beautiful, oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Ah, ah, I love it. I love it. Okay, you can go back in there now. And pretty pot too.